Hey guys, Brendan and Productions here, and welcome to yet another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be going over how to use recursion in order to produce a full Fibonacci sequence. Now before we begin with the actual discussion of the tutorial, I'd like to apologize for, once again, me not creating videos on a regular basis. I have been busy with school, work, uh, my social life, and not to mention um, several other extracurricular activities such as college applications and um, um, I was actually participating in a uh, robotics competition where I was the logistics coordinator, so that had me tied up for about three or four weeks. But now I am back and ready to roll. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. So the idea of recursion, well actually before we talk about recursion, let's talk about what the Fibonacci sequence is. So the Fibonacci sequence is actually a series of numbers in which you add the previous number to um, the current number in order to get the next number. So, the Fibonacci sequence starts with 0, 1. So, in order to get the next term, all you have to do is add the previous term and the second previous term. So, 0 plus 1 is 1. Now we add this term and this term to generate the next term, which is 2. We add this term and this term to generate the next term, which is 3, and so on and so forth. So this is a basic Fibonacci sequence. So our goal is to programmatically actually generate this sequence using recursion. So let's go ahead and talk about recursion. Recursion is the use of one method um, called several different times in order to produce a single output. So I'm just going to open up a Microsoft Paint window to sort of demonstrate what I mean. So what you have here is you have a working machine. This will actually be our method. And this machine produces a single output depending on the parameter. So if you put in, for example, a penny, it would spit out a nickel. However, if you could build the machine that takes this nickel and puts it back in in order to generate five times the output, this would be a good example of recursion, something that constantly is reused in order to produce different outputs. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a recursive method that we generate ourselves in order to actually generate the Fibonacci sequence. Now the Fibonacci sequence is the perfect uh, and prime and most used example for a recursive function, <coughs> or method rather, um, because all you have to do is return the additives of the two previous values. So let's go ahead and get started right with our code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a method that will um, actually execute our recursion. Now due to the Fibonacci sequence um, getting pretty large relatively quickly. As you can see, we quickly went from a one-digit number to a two-digit number, and we are going to crawl up to a three-digit number extremely quickly. I'm actually going to use longs instead of integers, which are just integers which with um, an extended maximum value. So we can hold bigger integers within our longs. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a method, and it's going to return a long, and it's going to be public long, and I'm just going to call it Fibonacci. And then as a parameter to this, we are actually going to want to send in the index of the actual um, item we are getting. So if we take a look at our sequence, um, index of 0 would actually be 0. An index of 1 would be 1. An index of 2 would be 1. An index of 3 would be 2. So on and so forth. So we will be able to generate specific values depending on the actual, um, the actual sequence or the actual index specified. So the first thing we need to do in our um, actual program itself is we need to specify the beginning value. So since this is the index, if the index is 0, which in our sample Fibonacci sequence, well, this is the Fibonacci sequence, if our index is 0, we're going to return 0. So we're going to say if i is 0, return 0. So um, Every recursive function is based on a set of initial values that will constantly be hit eventually. So what we need to do is tell our application that these are the initial values. Um, when i is 0, we're going to return 0. And when i is either 1 or 2, we're going to return 1. So we can then say if i is less than or equal to 2, return 1. So these are our initial values. and. Um, so what we're going to be doing is this function is actually going to return the specific term that um, we want. So if we spin, plug in an index of 1, i is not going to be 0, but i is less than or equal to 2, so it's going to return 1. It will give us the uh, appropriate values. 
So the next step in our uh, actual recursive function here is to generate these the values of um, indexes past 0, 1, and 2. Now, if you analyze the Fibonacci sequence, if we were to actually get a the item with an index of 3, which would be 2, all we have to do is add the two items of previous indices. So if I was 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, my bad, if I was 5, then all we would have to do is add up I, or add up Fibonacci of 4 and Fibonacci of 3. So let's go ahead and take this idea and actually apply it to our method. So all we want to say is we're going to create a new Fibonacci term. So if the term is not 0 or 1 or 2, which we know definite values for, then we're going to say long fib term, so we're going to create our own Fibonacci term, and this is when it's going to get confusing. So what we want to do is we want to add the values of the two previous indices. Well, in order to actually get these two previous indices, we need to access our Fibonacci method again. So Fibonacci, and we need to get the first previous indice and the second previous indice. So I minus 2. And then, once those are added together, we are going to return the specific fib term that we just created. And here we have a simple, elegant, and precise solution to generate our actual Fibonacci sequence. So let's go ahead and test it in an example. So what we're going to do is we are going to get um, the Fibonacci number with an index of 7. So we're going to say, if i is 0, which it's 7, so we're just going to say in a notepad, i is 7, so if i is 0, well it's not 0, and if i is less than or equal to 2, well it's not equal to 2, then we're going to create a new fib term, and it's going to be equal to Fibonacci, which we're going to abbreviate fib, of 7 minus 1, which is 6, uh, plus fib of 7 minus 2, which is 5. So now we actually need to dive into these ones. So right now we're going to dive into fib 6. So fib 6, um, i is going to equal 6, uh, i is not 0, and i is not less than or equal to 2. Therefore, we're going to create a new fib term equal to fib um, i minus 1, which is 6 minus 1, which is 5, plus fib of i minus 2, which 6 minus 2 is 4. So as you can see, we are creating a cascading version of these values. I'm just going to tab over this fib 5 so we don't forget about it. So now we can go ahead and dive into these new Fibonacci um, method calls that we are creating in this cascading little thing. So let's go ahead and dive right into fib5, or yeah, fib5. So we are calling fib5, um, and this is when i equals 5. Which, if i equals 5, um, so we're calling Fibonacci here, i is not equal to 0, and i is not less than or equal to 2, therefore we're going to return a new value of fib 5 minus 1, which is 4, plus fib of 5 minus 2, which is 3. And as you can see, we're going to have to do this again. So let's go ahead and go right into our fib 4 here. So fib 4, well, that means i equals 4, which means that, once again, i is not equal to 0, and i is not less than or equal to 2, Therefore, um, fib 4 is going to actually return fib of 4 minus 1, which is 3, plus fib of 4 minus 2, which is 2. So now we have um, fib 3 to deal with. So let's go ahead and do this. As you can see, um, recursion by hand is actually very intense. However, programmatically, it handles it quite well. So fib 3, uh, we've got i equals 3. And if we look back at our code, i is not equal to 0, and i is not less than or equal to 2. So it's going to go ahead and return fib of 3 minus 1, which is 2, plus fib of uh, 3 minus 2, which is 1. So let's go ahead and um, figure this out. Now we can go ahead and dive right into this. So we've got fib of 2 plus fib of 1. Well, fib of 2, that means i equals 2, which means that i is less than or equal to 2, which means this is going to return 1 plus, and then fib of 1, well, i is not 0, but i is definitely less than or equal to 2, so this is also going to return 1. Therefore, we know that fib of 3 here actually returns 2. 
So we can go ahead in our actual computations here and replace all fib of 3s with 2. Well, right here in our next level of computation, we actually see that we have a fib of 2. Well, in this case, um, i is um, 2, which is definitely less than or equal to 2, which means this value returns a 1. So therefore, when Fibonacci with fib um, 4 here, it returns 4, or 3. So then we can replace all of our fib 4s with 3s. So now we're actually looking into fib of 5. Well, um, this happens with 3 plus 2, right? Which was just calculated with our fib of 4 plus fib of 2, I believe. So our fib of 5 actually gives us 5. So we can go ahead and replace all of our fib of 5s with 5. And now finally, we have reached the top layer of our fib term. So now we have fib of 6. Well, we just learned that fib of 6 is 5 plus 3, therefore fib of 6 is 8. So we can go ahead and replace all of our fib of 6s with 8. And we now know that fib of 7 is 8 plus 5, which is 13. And if we go into actually calculate the Fibonacci sequence by hand, so we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We know that the seventh term is 13 which our recursive function just actually calculated for us. So by hand, if we run this programmatic method, we know um, that it actually works because we just did it. So let's go ahead and actually implement this recursive method into our own little program. So what I'm going to have it do is I'm going to create a public static void main with um, some string arguments, which, as you recall, is a method that is automatically run by all classes. So in our main, we're actually going to create a, um, a while loop that prints out all values of the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm going to say int index equal to 0. And for the, all eternity, what we're going to do is we're going to print out the Fibonacci sequence. So we're going to say while true. And then we're going to say system.out.println Fibonacci and we're going to call our recursive method here and send in the index of index. And then after we actually print the number, we are actually going to want to increment index by 1. And it looks like I made a spelling mistake. Oh, no, no. Um, so our main method is going to create the index, and then we're going to constantly run our printing out of the Fibonacci index, and then increment the index to actually get values. Now, since this um, calling of Fibonacci is actually in a static method, our static main, um, we actually need to make the Fibonacci method itself static. So this can be done by typing in static before long. So now we have public static long. So now if we go ahead and actually run the application, I'm going to drag my debug window over for my other monitor, you can see that it, it's generating all values of the Fibonacci sequence. Now, um, since it's actually a recursive function, after it hits a certain threshold of values, it actually starts to get a little slow. However, um, that's okay. It's still awesome. Because we just created a um, piece of code that contains maybe six lines of code, and it is capable of generating the entire Fibonacci sequence. That is the beauty of recursion. So now that you know the basics of recursion, we can discuss um, why recursion is so nice. Well, since recursion actually makes methods small and um, short, uh, any type, any time you can use recursion, it is regarded as as common as computer scientists as beautiful and elegant. And there's just a certain thing about figuring out recursion that um, just makes you want to like bow down to all of computer science <laughs> because this stuff is awesome. So this is the Fibonacci sequence and recursion in a nutshell. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you actually learned a lot from watching this video. Um, I know when I learned about recursion, it helped me a lot. But um, this is actually a very interesting topic. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.